Just in the middle of uh, stripping this casing, paintwork is constantly peeling on it, cracking off, flaking, because it's sat on the old scumble. Probably 100 years old this wood, more. Been a long time. You can see where I've scraped it off. That's down to the wood that is. And see the old scumble underneath the paintwork there. This paint is just coming straight off it. Around the side here. The old stain scumble. So I'll just take that straight back to the woodwork there. Good wood under there. So I just want to get the rest of that off. And this. So I'll just show you some of the tools I've used. And then what I've done before I started to remove it. Just a few tools I'll be using. The paint scraper with the tungsten blade. Old filling knife. That's good for just scraping generally. A warm, heavy duty blade, it's not sharp, warm, and a good heavy duty knife. Obviously eye protection, because some of this paint is going to fly everywhere, you may get it in your eye. And a dust mask for when you come to do any sanding. So this Stanley knife, basically cut around the edge of the frame so the paint comes off on a nice neat straight edge like that on the mitre cut across underneath that edge and then all the way down this inside edge all the way down so then when the paint work, when the paint comes off, it's not gonna crack and fracture around this side. So a quick look at how I get it off. So like I say, I've already gone round with my knife, all the edges. The blade, filling knife. It's going to start on the flats. If there's been any repairs, you'll find them. The paint will be a bit tighter underneath. Change to my knife, just use the point of the blade. Okay, so you get the gist on the flats, it, it does come off quite easy. If you do start to struggle a bit, then I just go for the point of the blade and just get it under the edge of the paint. Okay, if there's been any repairs, you'll find the tight paint.
Okay, so you get the gist there. Okay, with these edges, I want to be able to get underneath the paint and just take it back. With the old wall premiere on there as well, that green bit of the scumble underneath. And now, with these edges again, they'll just come off nice and clean. Yeah, that'll come off easy. Probably dirty, greasy, not keyed, but it will always just keep chipping back. So all these areas down here that have been repaired in the past. Yeah, yeah. Now this bit, this can be quite difficult. I'll show you how I get this out. Two ways I can tackle this. Paint scraper into the corner, straight into the edge there, and carefully using my finger as a guide, just draw that up. And it can be quite tough if there's been a repair. We just don't want to damage this wood. Okay, if it becomes a little bit too tough, then taking the knife, filling blade, I just want to try and get just underneath the edge there. You can just just get it. Okay. So I think we're coming near a repair there. Huh? No, just a tough bit.
all the paint removed off the surface. Now I've just got to get this scumble off. Now this is quite uh, brittle, powdery, quite crystally. So I'm not going to sand it. I'm going to scrape it off and I'm going to wear my mask. So just with the paint scraper, carefully just start to draw it down. Come straight off down to Burwood. Okay, and then this is a square edge flat, so I just come back onto this edge here. Slight bull nose. That's clear to the corner there. Just tack it halfway, and then now I can tackle from this side. So you can see how easy it came off there. So generally just keep working at it, get it down to burr wood and then I'm just ready for the next step. I was just using the back of the blade just to push that filler out. Started to tighten up a bit now. But generally, that's all I was doing. Now, I don't necessarily have to do this because I'm painting this. But say if you were varnishing it, then you would want to remove as much of this as possible. And then remember that where there's been a repair, then you will find areas where there's fillers. So you will possibly have to dig those out and refill and then varnish or stain and varnish. So that has tightened up there now whatever crack there was that's okay now this is down to burr wood got a combination of pad sponge pad 120 and sandpaper 120 so Bit of thorough sanding down and I'm ready for cleaning up. And now I just have to clean up this mess. See that scumble there? Quite gritty, crystally. Okay, now good tip is I've left this bit of a dustpan there just to collect something and also I've got newspaper on the floor I've got a sheet underneath the newspaper on top of me good sheet and that newspaper I've taped around the bottom of the casing just so the dirt sits onto the newspaper 
lot easier to gather up. removed any dust using the vacuum cleaner. Now I'm going to wipe over with methylated spirits, ventilation. I'm starting up here first. I am going to be painting this part of the architrave with this. So I'll do this now. Because when I come to this side, I don't want to transfer any muck back onto here because notice the cloth is getting a bit brown there, so it's picking up any dust. That's it basically. Go to get that back edge there. This is ready for priming now, this wood. I have a couple of knots to seal. I'll give these a couple of coats of the Zinsa BIN. And then I'm going to give the whole lot a coat because this is smelling old wood over 100 years old and it really does smell you can smell it proper if you had smelly vision yeah you'd know if you've had a strip wood like this before you'll know about it so that will block the odour so I'll just push it onto the areas where it's needed nail up in the corner here on this mitre which is stain the wood so I'll just do that anyway and then look down for any nails which are marked I'll have the one down there so one nail is the just cover that bit of stain in the wood another one there Once they're dry, coat this up and start with this edge. I don't really want to go onto the wall. So now we'll get rid of some of the paint off it and now I can just work it into that edge there.
for what this primer will do as well as sealing in any odors just hardening off the surface of it it will highlight any areas that need any filling so then you can start as you're applying this thinking about what fillers you're going to be using because there's going to be deep holes and there's just going to be shallow knocks because like I say this is 100 years old so it's took some wear over the years especially some of these areas around here where the lock is and a bit lower down if you have any dogs that have been scratching they can cause a lot of damage On this edge and just working it slightly into where that joint is and not coming over this edge just working up to it like so Just feather it back there if I touch it. While this is drying, a quick look at fillers and then I'll get it painted. So first of all, for against the wall here, there's not very much but there's a very slight gap. I wouldn't call it a crack, it's just a gap. So on that I'm going to use the polyfiller and then for speed of drying these areas any marks on the wood but generally overall it's not that bad there's only the knot out here and a couple of gouges here a bit of a knot there so for that I'll be using the Ron Seal 2 pack quick drying no problem there. For the joint on the casing, on this joint here, I'm going to backfill with the expanding foam. And once I've removed the foam after backfilling, then I'm just going to use the Ron Seal wood filler. So this will resist the shrinking and cracking. So that will be alright there for the joints. I would only use the Ron Seal 2 pack on areas which aren't going to be um, prone to movement. Foaming, polyfiller mixed. Now I can just Work the polyfiller in to this bit of a gap here. And we're not forgetting just to come down with a damp cloth. Now with a two pack filler, this bit of a knot on the edge here, I've used my Brad Old to put a couple of holes just to give a little bit more anchor so now I can just get some filler in I'll leave that to cure a little bit and then I'll shape it. So now really just get some in these. I 
I added a little bit more filler to this. It's not quite where I want it yet. But this is good enough for me to remove this. So then it will cure a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to use the filling blade and I'm running this way. Because remember, the gap is down there. So I'll just trim this off. Just pull that away. I'll leave that. Because when I come to sand everything, I can sand this before I fill. That's um, good enough for what I want. Just gonna trim it back to save a bit of sanding. I don't want to get too close though. And that's enough. Still a little bit soft there. Get some off the face just a touch. Don't want to dig in. To leave it there, that can be sanded. Some 120 sandpaper. I can now just sand the areas where that foam was. With that good dust down, and now with the run seal wood filler, the cartridge, but I'm not using the uh, nozzle, I'm just going to gun it, just take a little bit off. Yeah. With a damp cloth, I just want to make sure I don't leave any big lumps. Again, just makes it easier to sand. So if I need to touch up with the bin primer again, the BIN, then I will. So this has already been backfilled. I just need to Fine fill it really now at this stage. And I don't want to completely fill that up either. Just as long as I follow what is here, it'll be alright.
damp cloth will just help smooth it off. All that filler has now been sanded. I also sanded the rest of the casing as well because that's going to get a coat of bin primer now. So all this will get coated and the rest of the casing and then we're ready for the next step. This primer is now dry, second coat. If you do feel as though it's not good enough, there's any nibs in it, then you can always go over lightly with a warm pad. Yeah. And then remember, tack cloth. Wipe over with the tack cloth, remove any of the dust. So now I've got a small amount of thin paint. Use polyfiller down here. I can touch this up. I will be giving this two coats. This is just to seal that filler. Second coat of emulsion paint is on. That's not quite dry. I've already started bringing in the casing. I can just bring this down. I'll leave this edge. I can coat that up when I coat this up again. I'll be giving this two coats and I'll be giving this lot three coats just to build up the paint a little bit. edge over that other side. Quick look at what I was using. Oh, there's Zinsa Permawhite wet scrub rated so a good tip between coats cover your paint with a damp cloth and a polythene bag and also wash your brush between coats just makes it easier to clean your brush because be all difficult as when it dries in the stock so perfect for kitchens and bathrooms so this being a kitchen be okay and three coats no sanding. As long as you keep your paint clean between coats, then you'll be okay. If you do contaminate your paint, then you will have to sand. Putting that cloth on the bag over the paint will help stop anything getting in that paint between coats. So that's going to last a lot longer now. And then if I do come to touch up, then it's just a quick degrease and then I can paint straight over with this stuff. Perfect for kitchens, 